Whether you're a seasoned pro or a son-in-law who mistakenly said that you have no plans this weekend, it's my job to make sure that you can tackle this project like a pro. My name is Sam, and this is The Install Guide. You've just received your city post railing kit. Let's quickly walk through what's included. First, we have your post. These boxes will clearly identify post type, part number, and color. We recommend taking the post out of the box but leaving it in its plastic until you're ready to install. Next, we have your top rail. And just like the post, we're gonna take it out of the box but leave it in its plastic until you're ready to install. This is your hardware box. Each one's gonna be slightly unique in its contents, but we'll go over what's included in a standard kit. First, we got your cable. City Post always sends about 10% extra, just in case you make a bad cut or two. Up next, we've got City Post's patented piece, our top rail bracket. Its unique design allows it to sit flat for horizontal runs or rotate to match the angle of your staircase. Now we have fasteners, black bolts to secure your post to the deck, top rail screws to secure the bracket to the top rail, bracket screws to secure the post to the bracket. Lastly, we've got sleeve screws for attaching sleeves to the top rail. Moving on, we've got your end fitting. We're gonna send extra of these just like the cable in case you make some bad crimps. This is a beveled washer and will also be included in a separate bag if you have stairs in your project. When connecting two top rail pieces, City Post provides what we call sleeves. We make these in 90, 45, 22 and a half, 11 and a quarter degree turns. Then we have a straight sleeve to connect the top rails on longer runs and stair sleeves for upper, lower, and 90 degree turns. Wrapping up, we've got your paperwork. You should have two booklets included with your kit. First will be bill of materials. This will be everything included in your kit. The other will be our install guide. Make sure to take some time to familiarize yourself with this paperwork before you get started. Step one, lay out and install posts. Now before you bust out any power tools, let's take some time and measurements to figure out where you're gonna need to place your posts. One of the most important things here is that your post spacing runs no more than six feet per our engineering. Check your local building code to see if your area requires less than a six foot post spacing. All right, let's get into it. Grab your tape measure and let's find out the measurement of your first segment. To give you an example, let's say we have a 22 foot segment. First, you'll place both end posts a couple inches away from the edge of the deck. Then, take a measurement from center of post to center of post. That would come out to 255 inches. Next, figure out how many posts this run has. Here, we have five. That gives you four interpost spaces. So, we're gonna divide 255 by four. This is gonna come out to 63.75 inches, and this will be your center to center post spacing. Once you know where each post is gonna go, we need to figure out proper blocking for each one. Make sure that all lag bolts anchor into your blocking. Now that we've worked out where your posts need to go, use them as a template to mark where you need to pre-drill. Time to anchor your posts. Grab your drill, socket, lags, and posts. Oh, sorry, just one, that's better. Next, we're gonna pre-drill, bolt down, and level. If you're working on an uneven surface, we recommend using some stainless steel washers. Place them in between the post and the deck to help level it out. Pro tip, if your post is going right next to a wall or a 12 foot tall snowman that's structurally integral to your home, make sure that the two bracket holes at the top of the post are pointed away from the wall or snowman. All right, let's talk about corner layout options. We have three ways to do a horizontal to horizontal corner. First, we have our double post termination. This is our most popular way of doing a corner. And here we have two posts and they'll be side by side. Next, we have double post cable wrap. This is where you'll have two posts, they'll be kitty corner, and your cables will run from one post to the other. For the double post cable wrap, City Post recommends no more than one 90 degree turn or two 45 degree turns on a single cable run. Third is single corner post. Make sure your post is in line with both segments and you miter your top rail. Horizontal to stair corners only have two options, single corner, here you'll notice round holes for your horizontal and oblong for the stairs, or you can do double corner terminated. 
Each corner option has its own considerations. The single corner post needs to be aligned with both segments. In this case, if you had placed it too far to the right or too far to the left, it wouldn't align with the next segment. Speaking of stairs, it's important to know that these posts are directional, so make sure that the two bracket holes are pointed upstairs. Top mount stair posts have been designed to be placed as close to the nose or front of the stair tread as possible. If the stair post is too far back on the tread, the cable is going to come in conflict with the rest of the steps. When determining the placement of the intermediate post, we recommend clamping a string at the bottom, like so, and at the top, like so. Then, Take your intermediate post and place it so that it just barely touches the string. This will ensure a nice straight top rail that won't concave or convex. The last step is to place your brackets into the top of the post. Flat side of the bracket facing the holes for horizontal, curved side facing the holes for stair posts. Step one is complete. Reward yourself by drinking a soda. Mm. Step two, top rail installation. Our one by three aluminum top rail typically comes in six foot lengths. Since all your posts are spaced no more than six feet apart, you will cut down your top rail so that the joint lands right in the middle of the intermediate post, then you'll cover it with a sleeve. The only exceptions that need to be considered are the start and stop of a run and then on corners. You're gonna want some extra length running the top rail past the bracket instead of in the middle of the bracket like you would on an intermediate post. Well, step two is done. Now we have a convenient spot to put our soda. Step three is running cable. This can often be the trickier part of the install because if you're not careful, your spool of wire is gonna end up looking like early 2000s Russell Brand. Not fun. Let me show you a couple tricks. Pro tip, the day before install, go out to your hardware box and pull out all the bags of end fittings. Then grab three containers. One for the acorn nuts, ah! one for the washers, and one for the standard nuts. Got he. Option one, grab a five gallon bucket, grab your spool of wire, drill about a one eighth hole into the top of your bucket, feed the wire through, and you're good to go. The second option is similar, but this time we're gonna take our bucket and we're gonna screw it down to either a board or in this case, a sawhorse. That's gonna help prevent the bucket from tipping over as you're pulling the cable out. The next thing we're gonna do is drill two holes about three and a half inches from the bottom of the bucket, allowing us to run a dowel through the bucket holding down the spool. That way, as you're pulling the cable out, it'll keep that spool under control. Trust me, these two extra steps will make a big difference. To start, grab your cable and run it through any intermediate post you have on a segment. In this case, we just have this one. Now it's time to make the first crimp. There's three things we're shooting for here. First is that the stud is fully seated onto the cable. Second is that we're crimping on the smallest setting on the crimper. This will be marked by a 1-2 or 1-16. Third, Make sure you crimp as close to the opening of the stud as possible and hold on to that cable so it doesn't slide as you're crimping. Now we're gonna take the stud, thread it through the start post and install a washer and nut. For segments 10 feet or longer, we want the stud to be flush with the nut. For shorter segments, we want about three to four threads exposed. The reason being for short segments, you only have a couple rotations before it's tight and then for long segments, it's gonna take a few more rotations and you'll pull more thread. Now that we've installed the end fitting into the start post, we're gonna to come to the end post, pull the cable tight, and then make a mark on the inside corner of the end post. This is where we'll cut the cable, make the crimp, thread the end fitting through the post, and install the walker nuts. Now all that's left is the tighten. We're gonna grab our vice grips, and we're gonna clamp down on this flat spot where we made our crimp, we're gonna take our 11 millimeter socket and we're gonna give it a few turns. The goal here is to have about five to six threads exposed by the time you're done tensioning so you have just enough room to put the acorn nut on. Tension your cables until there's very little play. And just like that, your install is complete. If you have any questions along the way, feel free to reach out.